Last week I traveled to sunny California to ride Sky Park at Santa's Village. I'm pretty sure it's the closest bike park to Los Angeles, and I got to ride and chat with one of my former and now current teammates, world champion Lee Donovan. Come along for the ride and hang out for the conversation. So what do you think the chances of me hanging with you on the downhill is? Out of scale one to 10. Pretty good. You think? <laughs> Yeah, right, dude, so, come on, let's right, do it. So we're gonna do some runs and okay. we'll see if I can hang with you. Okay, sounds good. All right, cool. Lee Donovan on Trail Boss Channel. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's do this and clip in early and pedal your butt off for this. Nice. Sending these deep now. <laughs> this is so sick. to flat. Nice. Oh my god, that was good. High five. Oh my god, that was so good. I think that was the fastest run down yet. Oh, the conditions were perfect too. And you got the uh, that first thing backside. Yeah, that was good. Was that your first time clearing that whole thing? I've never ridden that. That was awesome. It's my first day riding that. That's all new. Yeah, that's awesome. I have to say listening to you on the vital podcast was cool because I really understood the work you had to put in to be successful. And I loved, I loved your story. Like, honestly, it was so, it was really inspiring. And I felt so spoiled because <laughs> you're like, you're like, Oh, Lee would get this fork or call oh, right. it. Yeah, you told that story about the Dorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was times where like, I would be going on like MTV Beach House and like I'd be at Mammoth, yes. like literally just won the Mammoth Trials event, which like back then these events had like tons of people yeah, standing around. I would, I would watch that and then like Dave calling in and like Lee Donovan would roll up with like their new prototype Manitou fork and I'd be like, hey, can I, can I get one of those too? Because I'm doing MTV Beach House Tuesday. Yeah. And they'd be like, nope, we don't have any more. Because they didn't care. Like, they're just into sure. racing. And, like, I get it. But So it was really interesting to hear your, your, your experience at the same time as my experience at the exact same time. I mean, basically the same time. Yeah, right. So we were teammates 20 years ago, right? 18 years ago. It's yep. like we're just graduating from high school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you listen to the podcast. Tell me your, the three things or a couple of things that you heard in that vital podcast that you didn't know about me as your teammate well i didn't know that you actually graduated from college so with a marketing degree right yep. yeah and i thought that was super impressive um i didn't know that you um i didn't know i didn't know you had to fight so hard to get sponsorships like i i mean just because there wasn't that many guys doing trials i just assumed that you were just taken care of kind of like we were as racers so i didn't know that what was the third one? I, don't think I didn't so know much you had been with Giant for so long. Yeah, I don't Holy think it's so moly. much that you had to fight for it, but it's just like when you go when you'd go to a Norva National back in the day and you don't have somebody on the podium, it's very obvious like we need somebody on the podium. Right. Enter yourself or something like that. So right. if you're if you're on the podium, people see it and they want you. Right. Whereas trials just kind of always had to sell it. Yeah. Which was 
challenging back in the day, but I think it helped me have a long career because yeah. you just always have to sell yourself. Yeah, and then like I said, just like as long you've been with Giant for so long, and I really, I really, I think because I missed a lot, long, a lot of those years with my retail store, that I didn't realize you'd been there so long. So. There were many other things. I love your stories. So I really enjoyed a lot of your funny stories about the competitions and the things you went through and even trying to sell your family that you wanted to do this and telling them that you could make a living doing it and they like laughed at you. And, and you know, I just, you know, it was, it was cool. I really appreciated that. I love those vital podcasts for that. I feel, I feel like I've gotten to know people that I kind of know, but I clearly don't know them as well as I feel like I know them now. I'm going to have a bad hair day and not be on camera <laughs> with my helmet on the whole hey, entire time. you know what? I always have a bad <laughs> hair day. <laughs> so when we were teammates on Schwinn, that was kind of towards the end of your yeah, competitive career. Yeah, the last career. two years so of my career. If somebody's watching this, like, your brief resume. My brief Try resume. Make it, it's, okay, you I'll have make it so brief. much stuff. Okay, so in 1983, I started racing BMX, and I did that until 1989. Um, I entered college in 1990 and then uh, found mountain biking in 1992. Okay. So Haro Bicycles, randomly a neighbor, um, worked with Haro Bicycles and she convinced them to give me a bike to race the Mammoth National. And that was my first downhill, was the Kamikaze downhill race in Mammoth Mountain, California. What's um, that like? That Coming was from ridiculous. BMX to like... And I was full rigid. <laughs> so full rigid. Not that you even need that much suspension there. No, but you're still going 50 yeah, miles yeah, an hour. Like, like... Yeah, yeah, on V-brakes. <laughs> 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 With top mount shifters on the frame. Um, yeah, no, it was, um, it was hilarious. And I really thought it was just never, that was not, definitely not my thing. But then they had the dual slalom there. And um, and I was like, I could do that. That's kind of like that's down. BMX, that's like yeah. BMX, just on a downhill. And um, and I did good at that race. I got third place. And a lot of people, like my name became, you know, that like a lot of industry people were at that event. And so people are like, oh, who's this Lee Donovan girl? And I think that's really how my career started from that dual song. I ended up getting third place. I beat Missy. She got fourth place. And I think that had I had maybe Missy not been in that race with me, maybe it would have been a different story. So I probably owe a lot of my career beating Missy at the first race because she was a big deal. Um, I mean, she is a big deal. She yeah. will always be a big deal to mountain biking. Um, <clears throat> but um, and that was my first race. And then, you know, I, in '93 I rode for Iron Horse, and that's really that was an all that was like the all downhill team. Plus Mark Gullickson was our only cross country rider. So we were six downhillers, and then did that. Um, that I went to Diamondback and then from 95 to 98 I was with Mongoose and then in 99 I did my own team with Intense Cycles and then 2000 and 2001 I was with Schwinn uh, with you. And you won lots of events so what's... Yeah okay so I won nine U.S. National Championships, four downhill and five dual slalom titles and I won the 95 World Championships and I won the 2001 World Cup uh, dual title. And um, yeah, and then you can just fill in the blanks. I had obviously <laughs> a lot of uh, good days and bad days. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yeah. And then how long ago was it that you started dipping your toe back into mountain bikes? So in two, I, I call it um, in 2009, 2010, I had like my midlife crisis, I call it. And um, I wanted to... I needed to like prove to myself that I was still a good bike racer. Again, ego, we're just having this conversation. Ego, it really plays a role in an athlete's life, I think, sadly. Um, and I felt like, I, I think in the end of the, at the end of everything, I think what I needed was stress relief. So I started, I decided I was gonna do five major downhills in 2010. And so I trained, I could train, I had five hours a week to train. That was all, for real, that's all I had. So I hired Ryan Hughes. And I trained with him once a week with all him and his motocross kids and stuff. It was super fun. And um, and that was cool for my ego because I got to train with all these young people and I could stay and hang with them. So it made me feel confident that I could be competitive on my downhill bike again. Um, you know, and not the goal wasn't to really win. The goal was to actually race the world championships, ironically, to race at Mount St. Anne. That was my goal. Okay. I wanted to make the world's team in 2010, which I did, and I got eighth place there. I was first place American, so I was pretty proud. Seventh place was Rachel Atherton, so I felt pretty good about myself. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, but uh, 
so that was kind of where I kind of got back into it. All right, so we're sitting here today, 17 years later, we're teammates again on Living Giant. Yeah. And we both are kind of doing this similar things, which is trying to inspire people again on a ride, but also give them instruction. Yes. So I do it through my channel and you yeah. do it through your camps. Tell me about yeah. Uh, tell me about your coaching. So I, at, at the beginning of uh, I Choose Bikes is my business because I decided I was going to choose bikes over fashion. And um, and so I Choose Bikes, my goal was at the beginning to kind of create like five star camps for for riders like myself. I kind of like, I like to stay at five star accommodations, but you know, I still like to get dirty on my bike, but you know, I like to take a bubble bath at night or maybe have a nice glass of wine or a killer filet mignon. So, and sleep in a really nice bed. <laughs> I'm not a camper. So, which is uh, funny because <laughs> then I just bought a van and everybody's like, You're gonna do the van life? And I'm like, No, I just wanna be comfortable <laughs> when I'm parked in the parking lot. Totally. And then I'll stay in a hotel. Yeah, like, exactly. Totally. So, I, my goal at the beginning was kind of to reach that customer that maybe finds mountain biking a little off putting uh, because it's dirty and, you know, it's like camping. So, I was trying to do events that like that. And so I still do offer a few of those camps, um, but most of my business now is just focused solely on teaching people how to ride bikes um, safely. And, um, and we get to do a lot of free education, mainly because of my partners um, on my program. And that's the other area that I like to really be part of is free because a lot of people don't even realize they need education. You know, and, and I, a lot of people go, oh, why, you teach people how to ride bikes. I get this a lot, like on an airplane or whatever. Somebody, oh, what do you do for a living? And I'll be like, oh, you know, I'm a mountain bike instructor. Oh, they have mountain bike instructors? And I said, oh, well, you know, I always use this analogy now because I go, oh, well, have you ever golfed? And a lot of times they'll say yes, or sometimes they'll say no. Well, if you want to golf, would you just go golf or would you take like a lesson? You'd probably take a lesson, right? You don't know how to hold a club. You don't even know what that little stick thing goes in and how to put the ball, right? And I mean, let's be honest, golf is probably way less dangerous right. than freaking riding a yeah. mountain bike, right? If you get it wrong golfing, it's right. not a problem. You get it wrong mountain biking. You might miss the ball and you could dislocate your shoulder maybe or jack it up from, you know, hitting a ball. But like, let's be honest, but but they can't even see it on mountain biking. And I'm like, oh my God, there's shifting, there's braking, you know, you got to learn how to like, you know, adjust your gears, you know, there's tire pressure, you know, it's, if the bike fit, there's just so many things before you even ride your bike. You know yes. what I mean? So I think that the industry, now I've been doing this for five years, the industry really has I, I, taken a real step forward in the education. And I feel like I'm a huge part of that. I feel grateful for that. And you know, I, I work I work a little bit more than I want to sometimes, um, but, uh, it's all for like the right reasons and what I do is pretty fun, so I'm very lucky. So the majority of the camps that you do are typically free? Typically, yes. Okay. So I work, um, I, like a lot of my local private, I work with some like clubs. I right. mostly work with a lot of clubs. Um, and then the other clinics I do that are all free, they're with my partners on my program. So whether it's with Cliff Bar or with its Troy Lee Designs or Live or SRAM or, you know, er, er, you know everyone, likes to have events somewhere and like that one I did in Moab with Cliff Bar they did the oh, bunny right. hop contest you know yeah so I just got to spend three days teaching people how to bunny hop and then do a bunny hop contest right right and so those sort of things are um, those are fun for me and it allows me to push the sport forward and I think the main thing I've noticed um, is that what we give at our camps, you know, are more of a sampling of of education. So you can see straight away, you're not gonna get a six hour clinic with me or whatever, but you're gonna get an hour and a half clinic and you're gonna learn how to do a wheel lift or you're gonna learn how to, you know, get over a rock roll or whatever. And you're gonna, you're gonna get a sampling of what you need. And then there, and then those people are going to go sign up for like Lindsay's clinics right. or, you know, uh, there's a lot of, you know, events out there and then they're going to get more involved in the events. Yeah. I try to try to do the events with my sponsors because then it's a win-win for everybody. It and, piques their interest on it. Right. But, and, and also like if you're catering mainly to beginners, a six hour clinic might be too much right. for them to exactly. determine whether or not they want a mountain bike. You, you spend exactly. an hour or two hours a long time for somebody just getting into it totally. and then if they see like wow this is for me 
they sign up for the real yeah. thing. And then that, I offer those clinics too. And if they decide they don't want it, they only spend an hour. Right. Like, and they're like, exactly. this isn't for me. I'm going to play golf. And that's why I think that it's what I love about the industry investing in education, you know, and um, I feel like I, I partner with people that are leaders in the industry um, and they see the need and they want to invest in that. And I really applaud them. And I, and I think now we're starting to see more bike people realize that, whoa, there's this whole other new customer base that if we just reach out and give them a hand and invite them, they're going to come on board. And so really like, it's good to invest in what we already have because that's always making product better. That's super valuable and important. I appreciate that as a consumer or as a, as a hobbyist. But on the other side, there's new people that are interested in coming in, but in the past we haven't really reached our hand out and invited them in. And now that we're doing that, I really do think, especially on the mountain bike side, right. I am certain we have, we have a lot of, I'm certain we're going to have see a lot more growth. Like in three years, we're going to be like, whoa, we have grown mountain biking by investing in education. So we need to go for a ride. Yeah. But if somebody watches one of my Trail Boss videos and yes. then they want to learn how to do it in person, <laughs> how do they find out? You can go to ichoosebikes.com. Okay. Check it out. And um, I have tons of information there. Most of it you won't want to read. <laughs> a, a lot of the clinics, a lot of the clinics will be around Southern California and stuff. But you do go to festivals. Yeah, I, I and that's all, all on it. my, all on my. Um, I have a little like schedule of okay. events, and it's all on my, um, on my website. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Sweet. You should have been like, not a chance.